I want to welcome everyone here and extend a special welcome and greeting to Itamar from Omdim Biyachat, standing together. We're really grateful that you're here with us tonight and that you're joining us in the midst of a really intense moment for Israeli Jews, for Palestinians, for everyone who cares about that holy land. So thank you. And we're excited to hear from you later tonight, your reflections, and about what we should be doing in this moment. And in this moment of both deep difficulty and heavy hope, words of Torah can often guide us forward, giving us words of both comfort and of agitation to take us in the next right step. In our double Torah portion this week, Achare Mot Kiddoshim, the Israelites receive a plethora of commandments for their new budding society. Some are incredibly challenging, confusing, and even offensive. And yet, a sampling of other commandments could be their entire could be an entire sermon on their own about this particular moment in Israeli history. For example, on rising economic inequality, you shall not pick your vineyard bare or gather the fallen fruit of your vineyard. You shall leave them for the poor and stranger. On increasingly undemocratic practices, you shall not defraud your fellow. <laughs> On judicial reform and the need for a fair and unbiased justice system, you shall not render an unfair decision. Do not favor the poor, show deference to the rich, judge your kin fairly. On enormous rifts within different groups of Israeli society, you shall not hate your kinfolk in your heart, as well as the famous, love your fellow as yourself. And on responsibility toward Palestinians, the strangers who reside with you shall be to you as natives. You shall love each one as yourself, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. Again, without providing all the answers, each of these are their own topic for a sermon or an entire day of learning. But what binds all these disparate commandments together is that they are all ways toward holiness in this world. At the very beginning of Parashat Kedoshim, we read a familiar phrase that is repeated throughout the portion. Daber el kol adat b'nei Yisrael ve'amarta aleihem. Kedoshim tiyu ki kadosh ani Adonai Eloheichem. Speak to the whole Israelite community and say to them, you shall be holy. For I, your God Adonai, am holy. Why are we to be holy? Why are we to treat ourselves as sacred beings and to exude that sacred goodness throughout the land? Because, quite simply, God is holy. Our commentator from the 16th century, Sporno, notes that this is the reason that each of us was created with Selim Elohim, created in the image of God that we read about in Genesis so that we could emulate and bring forth God's holiness on earth. We are each reflections of God and partners with God in building a world filled with holiness. And this portion provides us many of the ways in which we can do this holy work, by taking care of the poor, by loving one another, by protecting the stranger, by instilling justice throughout the land, this precious, precious land for all people. Each act of holiness matters for each inhabitant of the land and for each of us who care deeply about justice, love, and peace. To see the incredible work of Omdim Biyachad standing together is to see these very acts of holiness, igniting protests over the last several months to push back against disastrous judicial reform fighting to raise the minimum wage and pull people out of poverty, marching in solidarity with Palestinians in Huara after the terrible settler attack this year. Their work against all of the powerful forces of hatred and oppression is to see these acts of holiness and to see a way forward. And these acts of holiness, they give us hope for our future. It is written in the book of Proverbs, For surely there is a future, and thy hope shall not be cut off. May each act of holiness give us 
an everlasting stream of hope. For there is a future, one big enough for all of us. <laughs>